This is a short presentation on using thesauri for searching. You may think that a thesaurus is used only for writing, but it's actually an invaluable tool used in online searching. In a library collection, we need to know how to find particular material, and this is done by giving it a name. However, different indexers may give different things different names, or library users may use a totally different name for that same object. For example, we can use several words to index a gun. One person may search for the term firearm, another may search for pistol, and another may search for rifle. It depends on what the searcher has in mind. In the past, before the digital age, physical books and card catalogs narrowed the possibilities of where information could be placed and how it could be discovered. And so around three terms were used to assign subject headings to an object. An example would be a book about caring for Persian cats. The card for a book on this in a card catalog might use the subject headings animals, cats, and Persian cats to classify the book. A digital object, however, allows for multiple paths to the same information, and many descriptors can be used to index a particular object. To return to our Persian cat example, a subject descriptor search model, which is currently the preferred model, might use the descriptors cat care, Persian cats, pets, Persian cat health, and cat grooming to cover more bases for the searcher. Maybe one searcher is interested in Persian cat grooming, while another who's thinking about adopting a Persian wants to find out more about possible health This is where thesauri come in. A thesaurus is a listing of controlled vocabulary terminology that is arranged with references to broader terms, narrower terms, related terms, used for terms, and scope notes. Examples include legislative indexing vocabulary on the congress.gov site, thesaurus of ERIC descriptors in ERIC, and UNBIS thesaurus in the United Nations Official Document System. Leonard D. Will recommends sticking to three rules for using thesauri. Use a limited list of indexing terms, but lots of entry terms or non-preferred synonyms. Structure terms of the same type into hierarchies and remind users of other terms to consider. In rule one, we can link two terms by typing use and use for. As an example, we could use nuclear energy for nuclear power. The terms do have distinctions, but the job of the thesaurus is to provide multiple access points to a record, while later in the search process, the catalog can tease apart the finer distinctions of the two. Another useful characteristic of a thesaurus is that it helps the searcher include enough material in case their search term is too specific and thus produces too few results. In rule two, we see the importance of hierarchies, which broaden or narrow search terms. Leonard Will provides the example of jackets. There are many, many types of jackets and a thesaurus would prioritize the term jacket as a blanket term for different types of jackets. There are sports jackets, anoraks, blazers, dinner jackets, and boleros. Hierarchies thus provide the user with several paths towards specific information. In rule three, we can use RT or related terms to associate objects and the disciplines in which they're studied, processes and products, and tools and processes. For example, using RT, we can draw a relationship between cultures and sociology, or knitting and yarn. Finally, you'll remember that I mentioned scope notes in the definition of thesaurus. Scope notes, or SN, define the boundaries or inclusiveness of a term. The term butter might have a scope note that the search should include nut butters and yak butter or that it should be distinguished from the phrasal verb to butter someone up. The SORI help prioritize users in a search. They provide multiple pathways towards information, making it more easily accessible. 
I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and will find it useful in your future searches.